Hello and welcome to Keeping Your Cool, Thermal Considerations for TI's Analog Products. This is part three of a four-part series entitled The Device. I'm Matt Romig from TI's Analog Packaging. In this four-part series, we're looking at four common thermal questions that we often get when interacting with our customers. This is part three of four and this is entitled The Device and we're going to look at how do devices or components dissipate heat, um, particularly looking at uh, packaging and, and the systems around them. The first point to mention and to talk about a little bit is that semiconductor component packages differ in how they move the heat. And there are levels of, of deep dive that sometimes need to be explored here, but I'd like to talk through just a few of the basic concepts. So the first concept to understand is what we oftentimes call the thermal path. And what this refers to is essentially where does the heat go? Um, a package is thermally effective when it provides a good thermal path to the PCB or to the uh, heat sink if there's a heat sink on top or some other heat sinking mechanism. So just in the same way that in our electrical analogy that we looked at in previous parts of this series, um, we look at how current flows from high potential to ground and every resistance in that path matters. Um, the same concept applies when we talk about thermal path. So a package is essentially providing a thermal path from the source of the power which is generally the, the IC active area through the package. And so we're looking at how well does the package move heat or what's the resistance, thermal resistance from the active area through the package to the PCB. So we're looking at uh, thermal paths. And um, just a few basic concepts here. The heat flows through the path of least resistance and thermal paths, we're looking at the path of least resistance, oftentimes looking at um, where is there copper where is there silicon? Where is there other conductive materials? And how do we avoid or how do we work around or work through thermal paths which are less conductive or have higher thermal resistance such as um, plastic materials? The next concept to talk about briefly is the concept of heat spreading. A package is thermally effective when it provides heat spreading for conduction into the PCB or for convection or radiation out to the surrounding ambient air. So a few concepts to refer to there. Um, convection and radiation out to the ambient are usually the highest total resistance contributor when we look at the total thermal path or total thermal resistance. And those are both a linear function of the surface area. So the reason that heat spreading matters is because we want to increase the surface area for the subsequent convection and radiation. Um, so we're looking at conduction through the die, through the package, and through the PCB to spread the heat out in order to optimize the convection and radiation. So as mentioned before, these are primarily through metal paths. So we look at signal traces. We look a lot at ground planes and power planes, um, the design of those. And interestingly, any thermal path can essentially become saturated and can become the bottleneck in heat flow. So sometimes that saturation point is in the package itself and we have to look at increasing the, the thermal path or reducing the thermal resistance through the package. Or in other cases, the system or the PCB can become the bottleneck in the heat flow where we have uh, planes that are too small, planes that are broken up, planes that are supporting too much power, too many devices. And we'll look at a few examples of that as we go further, both in the uh, system and in the package. So first, let's look at a specific example here where we look at a case where the PCB itself was the bottleneck or was providing the highest thermal resistance, even though the package itself um, was providing a low thermal resistance and a good resistive path. So what you see here is um, this is actually a device that has been removed and flipped over. This device was formerly sitting right here. So you can see this is the solder to the exposed pad on the bottom of the device that was removed from here and you can see the tearing of the uh, vias in the PCB. So this is an example of what not to do from a thermal perspective. So you see this land here and similarly this land down here were landing pads for an external heat sink that was going to help cool the PCB or cool the device there. So the device is sitting here and we're looking at a thermal path from the device through this pad and then spreading in the PCB to the point where it's going to get to these landing pads for the heat sink. But this thermal path in the PCB was broken, so these are um, reliefs to help with soldering, um, but these are hurting the heat flow 
from the device through the small area of the PCB to the larger area of the PCB and into the heat sink. Um, the next page illustrates the same thing but simply shows the PCB layout. So you can see the black areas are the copper spreading area and then the white are, are breaks or reliefs. And you can see here that the thermal path is again coming from right here underneath the device and spreading out to this heat sink area. But this break here is hurting that thermal path. So that's one example of a situation where the bottleneck or the limitation in the thermal path to cool the device was actually in the PCB. Another example I'd like to show is to focus on the package itself and look at one particular kind of package construction which is common in many analog applications and is common for many devices that have a relatively high power dissipation and need a good thermal path. Um, so this example is what we would call exposed pad packages. They're called exposed pad packages because um, the IC die which is here is sitting on a pad which is exposed on the outside of the package. Uh, we saw that in the, in the previous example as well where we saw the underside of the package. Um, some common examples of these type of packages would be um, power pad or exposed pad QFP, TSSOP or other, other uh, package families, um, and QFN or quad flat no lead packages are almost exclusively exposed pad packages and, and um, provide that thermal benefit. Typical power that is put into these packages, it ranges all across the map. It can be as low as half a watt or even less. Um, where the thermal performance is, is not a big limiter, up to these packages can support uh, up in the range of 5 to 10 watts if the surrounding system and thermal resistance is, is low and is, um, is well managed to dissipate that heat. Looking specifically at the package and, and how are these packages designed for optimal thermal performance, um, the first thing to mention which is essential because it creates or, or it is part of that fundamental thermal path it's a very thin gray layer here you can see between the green PCB and the black package outline um, and that is solder. So that creates a thermal path directly down from the IC through the pad through the solder and into the vias and spreading layers in the PCB. So as you can imagine if this solder is not here and there's an air gap there and air has a very high thermal resistance then this thermal path has a very high resistance in the middle of it it's going to dramatically hurt the uh, thermal performance. Similarly, some embodiments of this package are flipped upside down and a heat sink is put on top. So instead of the PCB being the next layer in the thermal path after the package, a external heat sink is there. And the other important factor to consider in this configuration is that the PWB or PCB has a thermal pad to be soldered to and has vias to conduct the heat down through the PCB and then the ground plane in the PCB, sometimes multiple ground planes, are then well designed to spread the heat out. So going back to those two concepts, thermal path and heat spreading, the thermal path in this example is from the active area of the die down into the board, spreading into the board, and then convected and radiated out. And the thermal spreading occurs somewhat in the package through the die and through this pad, but mostly in the PCB itself. And so for us to um, support higher power dissipation in this package family or for systems or products using this type of, uh, of package construction, we have to support that thermal path well with soldering and with a PCB that's well designed and then with heat spreading, which is primarily done in the PCB. So to summarize this section of our series, thermal paths and heat spreading are two concepts to think about that must be considered to effectively pull the heat out of a device and then um, dissipate it out to the surrounding environment. The PCB and the system must be configured based on the packaging to move the heat away from the device. And exposed pad packages as a particular example, and there are others, provide good thermal paths to the bottom of the package, resulting in a good overall thermal path and low thermal resistance for thermal management. So this was part three in our series. Up next will be part four entitled The System where we look in a little bit more detail at some particular aspects and design considerations for systems. And you can find more information at www.ti.com um, or contact me directly at romig.ti.com. Thank you.